In this video we're going to look at graphing a circle and the general equation of a circle. I'm going to start by going over a couple examples and then uh, show you where this formula comes from. So the, here's the general formula for a circle, graphing a circle. x plus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. With any formula the most important thing is to know what all the variables stand for. So in this formula the h and the k right here stand for the center of the circle. H, K is going to be the center. There's really two things you need to know about a circle in order to graph it, and that is the center and the radius. And if you know those two things, you can graph the circle. All right, so I bet you know what R is, but you can guess that this R value right here is going to be the radius. So that leaves X and Y. X and Y are going to be your points on your circle. Um, just to recall something that you might know, you, you, you know the formula y equals mx plus b from working with uh, lines. And m is your slope, b is your y-intercept, and then the x's and y's are the points on your line, and those can change. Those are variables, because you have infinitely many points on your line. Well, it's the same idea with a circle. You're going to have infinitely many points on your circle, but the x, uh, or excuse me, the h, k, and r, those are going to be constants. That's going to be some number, and we need to plug in those values. So let's look at a real simple example that's already in the correct form. Um, how about let's graph the quantity x minus three squared uh, plus y minus 1 squared equals 25. So if we want to graph this, we need to figure out two things. We need to figure out the center and we need to figure out the radius. So if we look at our formula, we can find the center. We need the two coordinates of the center. The x value of the center is in the parentheses with the x. x minus what? Okay, what do we have here? x minus what? We have 3. So 3 is the h value. And then we need our k value, y minus what? That's the other, um, that's the y coordinate of the center. y minus 1 is what we have in this case. So therefore, the center is at 3, 1. Now the radius we can find here, we have r squared, so 25 squared. Well, 25 is not the radius. 25 is the radius squared. So we know that r squared is 25. To find r, then, you would want to take the square root of both sides, and this one comes out nice for us, and we get r equals 5. So we have the two pieces of information we need to graph our circle, which are the center and the radius. So let's go ahead and graph it. All right, the center is not on the circle, but we need the center to graph the equation. So if I go over 3 and up 1, I'll just put a little dot here, but that is not on my circle, so that's just sort of a reference point. I'll do the actual graph in purple, a different color. So from the center, we know it has a radius of 5. That means my circle is going to go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right 5, and left 5. Now if I had a compass, I could set my compass point in the center, measure out the radius of 5 and then draw the rest of this really nice. I'm kind of, let's see how this turns out. Just sort of fudging this. That's not bad. I'm pretty happy with that. I had a little dent up here, but that's the idea. So there you go. That's your circle. So your x's and y's are just all these points on the circle. Any point that lies on the circle would make this equation true. And it's a little tougher to test because there's a lot of fractions and stuff going on in there. Um, a lot of decimals. You might be able to find a spot where it looks like it crosses at, uh, at some integers, like 6, negative 3. That looks like a possibility. Who knows? It's probably not exactly 6, negative 3. But you could plug it in and see if it comes out close to 25. That's the idea. You don't have to do that. If you're just asked to graph the circle, this you're done. You find the center. You find the radius. You plot your center, you use your radius to go up, down, left, right, and then you sort of sketch in the rest of it, and that's all there is to it. Let's look at one more example <coughs> that might have something a little different in it. Let's bring in another graph here. Okay, let's do um, 
the quantity x plus 4 squared plus y squared equals 8. Okay, so if I want to figure out the center, I need to think about this form right here. Actually, let's write this form right below it. Well, let's write it above it. I got x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. All right, x minus h. Well, this says plus. So I have to figure out x plus 4 is the same as x minus what? Hopefully, you are saying x minus negative 4. I'm going to do that in a different color just to really emphasize that. So plus 4 is the same as minus a negative 4. And since the formula has a minus in it, I have to think of this as a minus to get my h value. Since the formula has a minus in it, your h value is basically going to be the opposite of whatever this is. If this is a plus 4, then your h value is negative 4. If this was a minus 4, your h value would be positive 4. You could think of it that way as well. Now, on my y, it's supposed to be y subtract something. Well, it's not y subtract anything. Well, that's exactly right. It is y subtract nothing. So your k value is 0. Okay, so there's our center. I'll jot that down right now. Our center is at negative 4, 0. Now we got to figure out the radius. Well, we have an 8 here in this r squared spot. So, in order to figure out the radius, we know that r squared is 8. r squared is 8. So I have to take the square root. And what is the square root of 8? Well, it's not nice. It's some irrational number. I could punch it into my calculator. The square root of 8 comes out to be 2.828427, a whole bunch of decimals. I have to graph this. If I'm being asked to graph this, then I'm going to have to... Um, I'm going to have to just estimate. And when you're graphing, the nearest tenth is about as um, as far as you need to go as far as graphing. You go to the hundredth, you're not really going to be able to graph that on a graph like this. So my radius is 2.8. Now, if I were asked for the exact radius, I could simplify my square root of 8 into uh, 4 times 2, take the 4 out, and I would get 2 square roots of 2. So if you're asked what's the center and the radius, you could say the center is at negative 4, 0, and the radius is 2 square roots of 2. That would be the best answer if you're asked for the center and radius. If you're asked to graph, you're not going to be able to graph 2 square roots of 2 without figuring out the decimal. So let's go and uh, plot our center. Our center is at negative 4, 0, which is right there. Okay, then my radius is about 2.8. So all I can do is estimate. I'm going to go up 2.8, so not quite 3, down 2.8, and right 2.8. I'm just going to put me about right there, and left 2.8, about right there. And that kind of gives me the outline of my circle. And then if I want to be super precise, I'll get a compass. Oops, I went a little. Otherwise, I could just kind of sketch in my circle like that. All right, and there you have it. There's your circle. So that's the basic idea. You want to get it in this form. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to look at some examples where we have to work a little bit harder to get the circle into this form in order to figure out the center and the radius. But before I do that, I want to take a look at um, where this formula came from. So these examples are just, you know, the concrete examples. But why does this formula work? x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. Well, let's look at a general um, picture of a circle. We know that hk is our center, and the radius is r, and xy represent the points on the circle. Now let's see if you remember this formula right here. This is the distance formula. And this is something that you should have covered before. And if you wanted to figure out where the distance formula came from, you'd have to go back to the Pythagorean theorem, which maybe you've seen um, where this distance formula came from. But we know the distance between two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, is given by this equation. So we could find that we know the distance between these two points, <clears throat> hk and xy, is r. That's the distance between these two points. So using this formula, I could say that my distance r 
equals the square root of, and then I'm going to go x minus h, x minus h, that, those are my two x's, my x2 and my x1, quantity squared plus my two y values minus each other, which are y and k, y minus k quantity squared. All right, now all I have to do is square both sides. If I take this and square both sides, on the right-hand side, I end up with r squared. And on the left-hand side, the big old square root and the squared cancel each other out, and I'm left with x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared, and that equals r squared, and that's my formula for the equation of a circle. So this formula for equation of a circle is utilizing the definition of a circle, which is the set of all points equidistant from a given point. Equidistant being the key word there, we can use the distance formula to come up with the equation of a circle. Now you don't have to know that in order to use the equation of a circle to graph it, but understanding where formulas come from in math and how they build on each other can really help you um, deepen your understanding of what's going on. So look for the next video on um, completing the square in order to get circle equations into this form so we can more easily graph them.